Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to cover some of the elements that are added by Harlow and Twine 2.0 and how to navigate them using jQuery. So Twine 2.0 and Harlow in particular add a number of extra HTML elements. TW link, TW expression, TW sidebar, TW passage, TW passage data, and TW story along with a couple of extra ones. These are important to note because when using jQuery these can be accessed edited and their attributes retrieved. Through searching for an element attribute matching the name of a link we can click on it using jQuery to navigate through a story. For example here instead of clicking on the link I can leave the cursor alone and just press a button and it will progress us through the passages here. Without knowing the link knowing the name of a TW link it can also be clicked using the functionality click in jQuery through looking for it and using the same previous method. And I'll show this example code in just a few moments, uh, but be careful with this particular example uh, as it will click all of the TW links found within. And in fact, I can just press a button and we can move along. Much like the previous example, jQuery can access the elements holding the story and its own attributes. Through using jQuery selectors, the elements holding the story and its content can be changed. For example, here I've changed the background color of the sidebar and the background color of the passage and changed the text color as well. However, keep in mind that existing Harlow functionality should be used to do this normally. And in fact, using it for jQuery is it's pretty much overkill and not worth doing. But we can also get a little fancy with this. So this example completely defeats the purpose of using Harlow in the first place. However, uh, it shows here how to retrieve the contents of named passages. So if I press left or right on the arrow keys, we can see the content changes. So I press the left, we get left content, and I press right, we get right content. And in fact, and as we'll look at the code here in just a moment, these look up the content of these passages within the HTML structure of the Twine story and retrieve their content and puts it onto the this other passage here using jQuery, but again, completely defeats the purpose of even using Harlow to begin with. So starting here with the start passage, as we're looking at the code, we can see it goes over to navigating links. Navigating links is where it starts to get interesting. Now remember, when we're using jQuery, we need to make sure it's contained within script tags, the script elements here. So we have an opening and we have a closing. And we're using key press, watching the HTML tag, so basically the entire document. And then if anything happens, if a key press actually happens, then we look for an element with a passage name attribute of move to the next passage. Now remember as I said in the start passage that Harlow and Twine 2.0 add a number of HTML elements. Well one of the ones they add, TW link, shows up whenever there's an actual link on the page. Within that element and its attributes will be something called passage name. And this will be the name of the passage that it points to. So we can look up that exact string that we use to create the TW link when rendered and then use jQuery to click on it. And we can effectively create a way of using the keyboard instead of the mouse to navigate through a Twine story here. Although again, a little more complicated because we have to look up that element and then call the click on it. However, as we move over here, if we don't know the name of the passage or we're using something else, we can just for look for all elements who have the name TW link. Again, because Harlow and 2.0 add those HTML elements. And we know if we only have a single link in the story, there will only be one TW link within the currently viewed passage. And so we can then click on it here using the click function of jQuery. And as we showed in the previous example, as long as we press something, we can actually progress the story through that way. As well, as I mentioned, because we know that TW Passage and TW Sidebar are HTML elements that Twine and Harlow add, we can look for those using a jQuery selector and change, using the CSS functionality, their styles. For example, change the background color, change the font color, change the background color. But again, 
hardware functionality exists to do this, so it's a little crazy to uh, use jQuery to sort of override existing functionality that Harlow already provides, but this is an example of how to do that. Finally, instead of using a straight uh, double bracketed link, we're using the link macro to create a link dynamically, then using the go to macro to go straight to fancy. Now fancy, in fact, does a little bit of fancy stuff here. Now it uses the key down instead of key press, so we can keep track of what was pressed when it was down, in case we want to keep moving left or keep moving right in some way. Then we're using a switch statement, which is part of JavaScript, based on event which, which is data passed to the f anonymous function here within this of whatever the keyboard was. And in this case, left is 37, right is 39 on the arrow keys. Then we're using the fact that TW, that passage data, TW passage data element within the twine story will have a passage with an attribute with the name left for that passage. We can then look up its content, its HTML, and we can switch it in for the content of an element with the ID of content here. Again, this is totally defeating the purpose of using Harlow, which we could do here instead of using jQuery to override all of this and make it so much more complicated, we could use this with display macros or print macros or even text macros depending on how we wanted to structure things as well as with the passage macro to look up the content of a passage. But again, as an example, uh, and using jQuery to completely defeat the purpose of using Harlow, we can act on a key down event to do different things. In this case, looking up the passage with the name left and getting its HTML or looking up the passage with the name right and getting its HTML, then setting it to uh, changing the text of an element with the ID of content, which is right here, and changing its text as we saw in this last example. If we press right, we get the content of the passage right. If we press left, we get the content of the passage left. And to verify that, this is left content of the passage with the name left. This is right content of the content of the passage named right. But of course, again, as I said, basically defeats the purpose of even using Harlow in the first place. However, you can mix in jQuery this way. So these are a couple of different examples of how to interact with the extra HTML elements that Twine 2.0 and Harlow add. TW link for looking up those elements and clicking on them using jQuery to progress through a story, as well as changing in TW sidebar and TW passage, the background color or the font color, and then using the fact that TW passage data and TW story will have, especially TW passage data, will have passages with attributes of the names of the passages within them to then look them up as we're using in fancy to then look up their their content and set it to the content of something else again basically defeating the purpose of using using harlow but we can use those dif different ways here and so these are a number of different ways of looking at the element the html elements that harlow and twine 2.0 add to HTML and then using jQuery as an additional JavaScript layer to navigate those, looking up their content or navigating through the story using key press and key down functionality to add additional functionality on top of that already provided by Harlow. But again, these are slightly more complicated and in the case of Fancy, completely defeat the purpose of using Harlow ways of going about using these different things, but are ways to mix both Harlow and jQuery within a Twine story to achieve different effects.